I think you're going to like hearing from him as well. Here he is, the newcomer for the White Sox and now new center fielder. Well, you've played in the National League. You've been to this city before. Uh, what, what are your thoughts when you find out you're getting traded here? Um, I'm excited. I, I've always enjoyed Chicago. It's been a great city in my mind. And, uh, um, you know, I, it's like I said, the warm welcomes have really helped uh, my uh, my transfer, I guess. You know, I got a call from Paul Kerrico today, and it's like, holy cow, you know, I'm, I'm talking to him, and I'm like, where am I right now? This is, you know, I'm excited, and I'm like a little kid right now. And uh, I'm, I just wish spring training was tomorrow so we can get get things on the on the baseball field and get going. So, uh I'm looking forward to it. So, so he just called you out of the blue. You picked up the phone, and there was a guy who said, "Hey, this is Paul Canerco." Yeah, I didn't. I was like, I started laughing. I was like, "No way! Come on!" Like, you're not calling me right now. So it was, it was pretty neat. I, I, like, I don't know if maybe somebody's pranking me, but I hope that was him on the phone. So, <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it, it probably was. Did, did he? <laughs> did he talk a lot? Did he talk a lot? Yeah. Uh, I mean, a little bit. Not, not a tremendous amount. A good amount, though. All right. Well, somebody's known for. It. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and he's and he's very articulate. So if <laughs> if if that's the guy you talk to, then it was probably him for real. Awesome. <laughs> so I, I know you're from Ohio. Did you? Uh, what would you grow up? A, a Reds fan and an Indians fan. What were you growing up? I was actually an Indians fan. I, I learned today actually Jim Tomey's in the front office with uh, with the White Sox, which is awesome. I, I'm happy and excited to meet him. But uh, I was like a, a '90s kid where. Kenny Lofton was my idol, and I, I love Omar Vizquel, and like I said, Jim Tomey, Manny, and Ramirez, and, and all those guys that I grew up watching, and uh, um, so I was a huge Tribe fan growing up, so no, I'm, no. I'm pretty familiar with the AL Central list, so, which is cool. Now, you, know, you weren't one of those people that, that were booing Tomey when he came back with uh, with the Phillies and with the White Sox. You weren't one oh, of those people, no, were you? No, okay. he's, he's a... He's a uh, He's a monument, uh, a walking monument, and I will never boo Jim Tommy ever. All right. Uh, talking with uh, Adam Eaton here on White Sox Weekly. Okay, so you got the call. You found out you were coming. Was this a was this a surprise to you, or did you kind of have an idea that maybe you could get traded? Because once you've you know you, you've built a little bit of uh, of a name for yourself, you know that you can always be traded. Were you thinking this might happen, or is this a total surprise? I uh, I. Uh, I don't know. I, on one hand, it's a big surprise, and on the other hand, I wasn't surprised. You know, I I know this, this is the uh, you know, I mean, it's a business, and it's a, a game where things can change in a matter of seconds. And and uh, and on that end, I thought that you know it could happen. On the other end, I thought you know um, I had a feeling that uh, the Diamondbacks wanted me to be their leadoff hitter for the next five to ten years. That's what I felt like. You know, I mean, that's what uh, the feeling was. But like I said, it's a business. This stuff happens, and it is what it is, you know. It's uh, nothing you can do about it. And like I said, I'm so excited for the opportunity that the, the White Sox have given me, and um, I'm going to um, definitely um, use them to the fullest. So I'm, I'm excited. Well, certainly they have told you what they expect out of you or, or how they, they plan to use you. What what are they saying that they're going to do with you? Are you a starter right away, or, or how have they phrased it? Um, you know, they. Uh, I think their, their thoughts are just come in and uh, if I if hit the top of the order and play outfield, um, like I said, it uh, it won't come to fruition until you know me actually get on the field and earn a job. And I, 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 nothing's been handed to me, and I don't expect anything to be handed to me uh, in the future. So, you know, I'm gonna my job is to come into spring training and and put myself in a good position to you know help the team win. And and, and for my eyes, I hope it's at the top of the order and and, and playing one of the outfield positions wherever that may be. But like I said. Um, Spring training will dictate that, and um, like I said, I, wherever they put me, if they put me behind the plate, I'll, I'll do the best <laughs> I can, and uh, I'll make it work. So, like I said, I'm excited. If it is at the top of the order, whether it's it's batting first or batting second, do you would you approach any at bats differently if you were batting one versus batting two? Because you know there are some guys who mentally feel like they have to uh, you know approach those at bats differently based on the spot in the order they're in. Oh, definitely, it's a huge adjustment. Uh, the two hole is much a uh, big difference uh, compared to the one hole. I think you see a lot more pitches in the one hole, and you have to try to. Um, you can work walk, walks in the two hole, but you definitely uh, um, see a lot more pitches in the one hole. And then the two hole, you have to be able to handle the bat. You know, hit and run. Um, a lot of bunting in certain situations. I think uh, the feet is more in play for you when you're in the two hole. You know, the leadoff guy gets on um, with nobody out. There's there's a ton of of uh, I guess. 
things you can do, you know, hit and run. You can bunt the guy over, hit into the hole. Um, you know, just any way to get that guy in scoring position for your three, four, five hitter. Um, and then, of course, you like a, going back to the leadoff spot, you know, you have, well, in the NL, there's a pitcher behind it, so it might be a little different now um, that that one may also. But, you know, there, like I said, there, yeah, there's definitely a different strategy coming through. That it's kind of like if there's a run on second base or a run on third base with less than two outs, that type of thing, so. Talking with Adam Eaton, new outfielder for the White Sox here on White Sox Weekly. Um, do you pay attention to, because we, we find that a lot of the of the younger folks that are coming through, not just paying attention to baseball, but guys that actually play the game, pay more attention now to the advanced metrics. And I think that some players don't really um, like to know what their stats are. They just like to go out there and play. Are you somebody who likes to know where you stand? And if that's if that's the case that you do, do you pay attention to the advanced stuff? Um, I do not. Um, main reason is is I think there's a lot to the game other than statistic based. You know, I, there's a lot of you know getting a runner over or you know stopping a ball and cutting the ball off, and and I think there's a, a tremendous amount of um, positives. I think one guy that comes to mind is Martin Prado. Um, I had a chance to play with him last year, and. That, that guy may not have the greatest year in the world, but for being a teammate and, and putting in the, the, again, the statistics that, um, um, I guess, don't show up on paper uh, is amazing. And I, he, I, I feel like I found every one that was ever existed because that guy did it. And, and like I said, he may not, yeah, it might not show up in the box score, but uh, it, he did it and helped the team win. And um, like I said, I, I think I. I put my hat on that more than the, the actual t- statistics of baseball. So, well, how important do you? So, I, I guess I know the answer to this question. Um, but, but how important is that stuff versus just the raw numbers that you're putting up? I'm talking about the intangibles, the the stuff you can't measure. I, I think that's I think it's a big part of it, especially on my end. I mean, uh, I, I everyone's always told me after they see me play, you can't measure heart. You know, I'm a 19th round draft pick, 571st overall. Uh, I, I kind of I told a bunch of kids today in elementary school. You know, you can't measure heart. You can't measure that um, in the intangibles. The guy, the you know, the guy that's gonna you know go all out every day of the week, and you know, it's uh, you can't measure that. And I, I think baseball was founded on the intangibles. Guys that, like I said, weren't all about the statistics, but got the job done, and and uh, that's the beauty of the game. Talking with Adam Eden, outfielder for the White Sox here on White Sox Weekly. You've had the injury. Uh, you have recovered from that. How is your arm strength? Where is it now? And, and is it is it continually a process of improving? Yeah, it's not an issue at all now, it's, which is great. You know, uh, when I came back, I, I tell a story. You know, I uh, right at the end of spring training, I was ready to go um, for the Diamondbacks. And uh, I think a week prior to breaking camp, we had that little issue. And. Um, three days before I'm coming back, you know, after six or eight weeks of rehab, I blow it up again two two days prior to actually getting back, and so it was the whole process over again. Which in, I think in entirety it was a it was a good process for me to go through with my arm because it gave it some extra time. And when I came back, it was weak. You know, it's almost like you're building your arm strength up again because you haven't really been throwing that much. But towards the end of the season, I I felt like I was letting some balls go and. And uh, I had, uh, you know, it's kind of weird because you throw the ball and you're kind of walking back to your position and you're kind of feeling your arm like it's supposed to hurt. Like I feel like it should hurt, but it's not hurting, so that's a good thing. So doctors say that's all normal stuff, you know, trusting it again. And, and like I said, I think it's a non-factor. I'm excited, you know, to, to get out there and start throwing again and, and then build up that arm strength and then get it back to where it was. How much work have you had to do in this off season, different than, you know, differently than what you've had to do in the past just because of that elbow? The big difference, I uh, um, well, just lifting smarter. You know, I've always been a kind of college lifter. You know, uh, kind of a bench, uh, bench press, squat type of guy. You know, I'm doing a lot of chest, and, and now I've done the complete opposite, where I'm trying to get off my chest a little bit to allow more range of motion with my my arm, which will loosen up on my elbow a little bit. So it's a little bit different, but I think uh, you know I've lost a little bit of weight, so I'm a little bit faster. But uh, like I said, I hopefully. I can still put a few balls out every now and again. The occasional pop, little guy. So uh, we'll, we'll find room for both, you know. So it's changed quite a bit, though. Do you expect that when you are here, when, when you're when you're playing games, that you're going to? Will you have a green light to steal? 
I don't know. I mean, uh, it's a whole new coaching staff. I've I've only talked to um, the skipper so far, so I'm uh, I'm not sure. I, I hope so. I don't th- I don't. I've never had the red light where I wasn't able to go. But I know each team's different. Each each protocol of stay on the bag is different. So I guess we'll have to see uh, where it goes from. And not, like I said, spring training, and we'll we'll, we'll create or excuse me, we'll kind of. Uh, just press those down and get those going to, on the right direction. So we'll see. You, you're known as uh, an aggressive player. I believe the the term that that Rick Hahn used for you was was dirtbag. And, and and there are a lot of people that really do appreciate players like that that aren't worried about you know they're always playing hard, not worried about injury. But it, is that something that in the back of your mind you're ever concerned about playing too hard and putting yourself at risk for for being hurt? You know, I've, the more I've been playing. Um, I, and being a Midwestern guy, I didn't play year-round in high school. You know, I didn't play year-round even in college. Um, the more I've been playing, the more I've been learning about when there are times to do it and where there's times not to do it. Um, before, it was all the time, even if this is really stupid, I'm going to do it anyways. But now it's to the point where it's it's a little bit smarter baseball. I'm, I'm still 100% all the time, but... And if the ball's three, three rows up, and it's, you know, it's, I'm probably not going to get to it. I mean, if I really stretch it, I might get to it. But um, to be just be smart in that situation, not throw my body and, and break my ankle, you know, going into the stands. Um, so just, like I said, more experience. But, no, don't don't let that fool you. Though. I'm going to be 110% all the time. It doesn't matter if it's day one or 152, so. Well, I, th- I think people appreciate that, but uh, I think at least here in Chicago, there there has been there have been times where guys try to push themselves a little bit too much, and they wind up risking injury, or they've had injury, and they try to come back too fast, and so they make it worse. And I, I think people would rather you be smart about it. I mean, they want you to play hard, but obviously they'd rather you be smart about it. How how did you get to be that way, and, and how long did it take? Was it a was it a one moment thing where oh geez, I need to. I need to I need to cool it a little bit, or was it gradual for you? It was very it was gradual. I think I've been pretty durable, actually. I, I haven't missed uh, too many games, even the minor leagues, um, even the big leagues. Besides my elbow, I mean, I've missed half the year, but just the, basically just throwing. But uh, most injuries of like running into things or like uh, going that hard on second base or running into a catcher, you know, I've just uh, I guess you learn again. You 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 I, when you analyze the situation you know what the risk is involved and and uh most of the time my team comes to my mind and my i throw my my body aside and say you know what i need to do this for the team and this is the time to do it and i'll do it uh, but it has been gradual like i said i've done stupid stuff where it's like i probably shouldn't do that anymore you know that was kind of stupid it didn't really gain too much for the team or or for me so it's like that's not good to do so um, and I'm sure I'll continue to learn. Even in Chicago, like we'll get get up there. I'm sure I'll learn first week of spring training what not to do. And uh, it's it's just like I said, you never know, never know everything about this game. So it's always a learning process. And and it's got to be at least somewhat comfortable for you because you're you're, you're going to be training in the same city basically that you had been training in for the last several years. You're going to be right back in Arizona. Yeah, it's nice. So my wife and I don't have to pick up everything right now. We can do it at the end of spring training, which is nice. So we'll stay at our own, own place we have now and, and just kind of commute to Glendale. It's a little bit farther, but it's not too bad. So it's, uh, it's been, in that sense, it's been nice. So. All right, well, you will be back here in the cold weather. I know you're, you're used to this Midwest cold. You're going to be here at the end of January for Sox Fest. Look forward to meeting you. And, and Adam, thanks for all your time today. Oh, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. If you need anything else, you let me know, okay? Oh, well, I'm fine, then. I'm going <laughs> to call you every other day. Awesome. <laughs> I'm pumped. Thank you, Adam. Hey, take care.